What's up, students? Welcome to Bible Life. Today is November 14th, 2020. Uh, a couple quick announcements before we dive into our lesson. Uh, first thing is we still have youth keep going on this Wednesday night, but the following Wednesday, which is Thanksgiving week, we will be taking that week off. Uh, so that final Wednesday in November, plan on uh, taking a night off, giving everybody a break for the holiday. Uh, hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. Uh, and then we will meet the following two Wednesday nights. Uh, that first Wednesday in December, December 2nd, will be a very normal Wednesday night. Uh, followed by December 9th, which will mark the end of our calendar year uh, meeting on Wednesday nights. And that is our Hayes Hill Students Goes Holly Jolly Night, which I'm really excited about. Uh, the Holly Jolly Night is always super fun. Obviously going to look just a little bit different this year, but we're still going to have a ton of fun. We're going to have Christmas songs and Christmas games and crazy prizes and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be a blast Looking forward to having fun with everybody on that night. Uh, and we will be live streaming that also and, and including some people in live stream if, if they're trying to play games and stuff. Uh, don't want to leave y'all out. Um, so that being said, we're going to be in John chapter 6 today. If you want to open your Bibles to John chapter 6, uh, we're just going to read a short chunk of uh, verses and talk about them for a minute uh, for Bible Life this morning. But first, let's dive into uh, our, first let's go to prayer before we dive into the Word. God, we just thank you so much for uh, today, for our students, for the chance to study the Bible together uh, virtually. God, I just pray that you would just continue uh, to show us a path to getting back to uh, more of a normal routine and doing the things that, that we love doing, meeting together. Uh, pray that in January we can start Bible life uh, in person as we plan. God, we just pray for our world. Uh, we pray for our country and just the culture and the, the struggles that people are going through with the unknowns of the virus and, and in politics and, and in all walks of life, God. Uh, we just pray your blessing on our time in your word this morning, uh, that you'd be honored by it. Pray this in your name. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to read uh, John chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 50. So, uh, this is Jesus talking. He, he says, This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the, for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of the Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him, as the living Father sent me, and I live I'm sorry, my pages are stuck together. And I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that come down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. Let me, let me set the stage. So Jesus is talking to this crowd of people. This is right after the feeding of like the 5,000 and that kind of stuff. Like Jesus is doing all these miracles. He has this huge group of just thousands of people following him. I don't know if you've ever been to like a professional sporting event. Like let's say you went down to a Spurs game down in San Antonio. If that stadium were filled to the max, it'd be about between 20 and 25,000 people, I think. And so like that's the crowd that Jesus fed is that many people. A stadium's worth full of people. And these people are following him. And what Jesus knows is that what's in their heart is not that they're following him because they understand that he is the Messiah and they want to surrender their lives for his good and his glory, but rather that they're following him for selfish desires. Number one, they like the show that's being put on. They like seeing what Jesus is doing. They like seeing the miracles. They're in awe of it. A lot of them are following him because they have things in their life. They're hoping Jesus will perform a miracle on them and heal them or help them. And those aren't outright terrible things, but Jesus is, is seeing these people and he's seeing that the reason that he came was not to put on the show and to heal us from physical ailments and that that was it, but that Jesus came to heal a much bigger problem, the problem of sin uh, in the world. 
to give us hope because we're all, as humans, doomed because of our sin, destined for hell. And what Jesus sees is that the people following him, they don't care so much about that. They just care about what he can do for them here and now. And he decides, hey, I, I have a path I need to follow. I, I need to die. I need to be put to death. I need to raise from the dead so that these people can have true hope. And so what I need right now is I need all these people who are following me for the wrong reasons. I need them to bounce. I need them out of here. And so he hits them with these really hard truths that they don't understand yet. He goes in this long speech about the bread of life that will give them eternal life. And they probably understood that as a metaphor, and so they're getting that, and they're going, okay, cool, I want whatever this bread is. I want eternal life. Yeah, if you're offering eternal life, Jesus, I'm in. Let's go. And then he says, the, the bread that you will eat is my flesh. And the drink that leads to eternal life, it's my blood. And he goes on this long rant about if you don't eat my flesh and you don't drink my blood, you can't have eternal life. If you don't drink my blood and eat my flesh, you can have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. So eat my flesh and drink my blood and drink my blood and eat my flesh. And he repeats it over and over and over and over again. And it confuses the people and they're thinking to themselves, what is happening? The, the, the show's, show's over, people. This guy's lost his mind. We're not cannibals. We're not going to eat his flesh. We're not going to drink his blood. Now, what's Jesus talking about? Jesus is talking about the Last Supper and the symbolism of him offering the bread and the wine to his disciples the night that he's betrayed, which we now have taken as a church, as commanded in 1 Corinthians, to have the Lord's Supper. Some, some places call it communion here uh, at Hazel's. We call it Lord's Supper. We just did it last Sunday where uh, we take the bread and we take the juice and we eat it and we drink it in remembrance of Jesus. Not that we believe there's something like weird and like supernatural going on where like we take that little uh, like weird wafer thing that we, that we eat and, and somehow like it becomes Jesus' flesh and we're like all cannibalizing ourselves. No, it's not that at all. It's symbolism. It's symbolic that together we eat uh, the, the bread and we drink the cup to remember what Jesus has done, that he had to literally give up his flesh and shed his blood for us so that we could be saved. And when we take the Lord's Supper, that's what we're remembering. We're taking a moment as the body of Christ to remember what he has done for us. And as we eat that bread and as we drink that cup, that's what we remember. That was the price. That's what it cost. And we have to be with him in that, in his sacrifice. That we would sacrifice ourself and our worldly desires and passions and follow him. That we would sacrifice anything and everything that we might want to pursue in this life if it's not focused on the glory of Jesus. See, the show Jesus put on and the miracles that he was doing, those were real and awesome things. And Jesus can perform miracles still, and he does perform miracles still, and he heals people still, and he gives hope where there is hopelessness, and he does amazing things. But the story of Jesus is that it's not about this life because this life will end. Every person Jesus healed still died someday. Every person that Jesus brought back from the dead, thinking about the centurion's little girl who died, but Jesus brought her back, or Lazarus who died, and Jesus brought him back to life, they all still died someday. There's only one person who died and came back to life and never died again, and that is Jesus. And he did that so that we could see the hope that we have in him, that he lives so that we can live. Not that we will live forever here on this earth, but that this life someday will come to an end and eternal life has already begun for us in Jesus and that will continue beyond the flesh of this life. And see, the story doesn't even stop there because Jesus promises us that the end of times, when he says it is now completed, is finished, when he returns, even our flesh will be restored and resurrected as his flesh was resurrected. And we'll live forever with him. So don't be weirded out by John 6. Be encouraged by it. That, that we take part in the Lord's Supper because we identify with this verse. We eat the flesh and we drink the blood because we're with Jesus. If you don't know Jesus like that, if you don't know Jesus personally, if you haven't experienced the hope that comes from salvation in Jesus, you need that today. Reach out to me or your smarter pleader. We'd love to talk to you about it. Let's pray.
Jesus, we thank you so much for the hope that we have in you. We pray that that hope uh, is true in every heart that is watching this video and that together we can celebrate the salvation we have in you. And when we have Lord's Supper, we would celebrate the eating of your flesh and drinking of your blood and the symbolism of what it means. We pray these things in your name. Amen. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. 